Welcome to another episode from the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, I'm going to dive into uh, some additional details on smart contract security for Ethereum when we're working with Solidity. And, you know, what are some of the pitfalls you can run into and how can you solve these pitfalls and, or avoid them? So again, um, you know, these slides were created by myself and Adnan. Uh, the slides and the video are available in a Creative Commons. And some of the contents is actually based on the Mastering Ethereum GitHub site by Andreas and Gavin. And I'd like to thank them for making their contents available under this Creative Commons license. Um, so let's dive into, um, you know, sort of a high level overview of smart contract security using Solidity on the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about security best practices. Um, and then I have some additional videos that will dive into specific anti-patterns to avoid like reentrancy uh, and many of the other uh, Solidity anti-patterns that you really should avoid if you can. Um, so let's dive into this. So first off, let's talk about smart contract security at a very high level. So security is one of the most important considerations when writing smart contracts because smart contracts can spend people's money. Uh, in the field of smart contract programming, mistakes are costly and easily exploited by bad actors who want your money. So, you know, we're going to talk about security best practices and design patterns, as well as security anti-patterns, which are patterns you want to avoid, uh, patterns that introduce vulnerabilities into your smart contract. Um, as with other programs, a smart contract is going to execute what the developer wrote. And that's not what the developer wrote is not always what the developer intended. Uh, furthermore, all smart contracts are public and any user can interact with them simply by creating a transaction. It's not like you've got a firewall preventing people from interacting with your contracts. So any vulnerability can be exploited and losses are practically impossible to recover. And it's therefore critical to follow best practices and use well-designed uh, patterns when you are writing a smart contract that's going to be on the public Ethereum blockchain, the mainnet. So let's talk about, uh, you know, some general uh, security best practices. One thing to keep in mind is, you know, why are we worried about security? You know, banks are worried about computer security because they hold funds that they don't want to have stolen. Uh, banking computer systems rely on security uh, through having private data centers where only their employees have access. On the other hand, public blockchains allow anyone, including hackers, to run programs on the blockchain and see all the source code. Um, you know, in a way you can think of a blockchain as sort of being like a bank, except banks don't put all their source code out there publicly available and banks try to prevent hackers from running programs on the bank machines. So because we don't have the private firewalls and the private systems and the private data centers that the banks are running, we have to rely on cryptography to protect us. Um, now in some ways cryptography is going to be better than what the banks are relying on, but in other ways it can be worse. So let's talk about some security best practices to think about when we're using smart contracts on a public blockchain. So the first security best practice to keep in mind is uh, minimalism or simplicity. That is the idea is that complexity is the enemy of security. The simpler the code and the less it does, the lower the chances are of having a bug or an unforeseen effect occurring. So when first engaging in smart contract programming, developers are often tempted to write a lot of code. Instead, you should look your, through your smart contract code and find ways to do less with fewer lines of code, less complexity, and fewer features. If someone tells you that their project has produced thousands of lines of code for their smart contracts, you should question the security of that project. The simpler the contract, the more secure, the more readable. Uh, let's talk about code reuse. Try not to invent the wheel. If a library or contract already exists that does most of what you need, then reuse that library or contract. Within your own code, follow the don't repeat yourself principle. You know, If you see any snippet of code repeated more than once, ask yourself whether it can be written as a function or library and reused. 
code that's been extensively used and tested is likely more secure than any new code you write. Um, and beware of the not invented here syndrome where you're tempted to improve a feature or component by building it from scratch. The security risk is often greater than the improvement value. Another best practice to think about is code quality. Smart contract code is unforgiving. Every bug can lead to monetary loss. You should not treat smart contract program in the same way as general purpose programming. You know, writing decentralized apps or dApps in Solidity is not like creating a web widget in JavaScript. Rather, you should apply rigorous engineering and software development methodologies as you would in aerospace engineering or another discipline that relies on rigorous safety. Once you launch your code, uh, there's little you can do to fix any problems in the smart contract. From a readability and audibility perspective, your smart contract code should be clear and easy to comprehend. The easier it is to read, the easier it will be for the auditor to read. Smart contracts are public, as everyone can read the bytecode and anyone can reverse engineer it. Therefore, it is beneficial to develop your work in public using collaborative and open source methodologies to draw upon the collective wisdom of the developer community and benefit from the highest common denominator of open source development. You should write code that is well documented and easy to read, following the style and naming conventions that are part of the Ethereum community for other projects. Uh, finally, from a test coverage perspective, test everything you can. Smart contracts run in a public execution environment where anyone can execute them with whatever input they want. You should never assume that input such as function arguments is well formed, properly bounded, or has, is not being submitted by a malicious hacker. Test all arguments to make sure they're within expected ranges and properly formatted before allowing execution of your code to continue. So as a smart contract programmer, you should be familiar with the most common security risks so as to be able to detect and avoid the programming patterns that leave your contracts exposed to these risks. Um, I'm going to upload several videos that dive into uh, how various smart contracts have been hacked in the past, whether we're talking about the DAO that suffered from a reentrancy hack or from other famous uh, decentralized applications that only discovered their vulnerability after they were published uh, and were immutable on the Ethereum virtual machine. So please turn in, tune in next time when I cover some additional uh, smart contract security tips throughout my series where I dive into these various security risks and anti-patterns that did occur in real life on the Ethereum virtual machine in production. So thanks again for watching this episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett.